And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Superstocks is a re-theming of Fund Manager. Superstocks is from Playoff Games, and if you look back through my reviews, you'll find Fund Manager. I reviewed it uh, just a little under a year ago. And Fund Manager is a stock market game, which I liked, but uh, had too many problems with me to really enjoy it too much. But the biggest problem was, uh, it, the two biggest problems were, it was very, very random, and there was a lot of keeping track of everything with pencil and paper, which just really got to be too much during the course of the game. So they've actually gone back and redone these things in Super Stocks. So, and it has become quite a fun, good, uh, economic stock market game. I like it. It has a few, I have a few minor quibbles with it, but for the most part, it's very excellent. And I look forward to playing this copy many times. Here's the board of Super Stocks and the board itself here with a track and one pawn on that track. And then over here, you can see the stocks with markers that will mark the current price of each stock. They start at a different price. Uh, for example, Blue Motors starts at 9, Green Heavy Industry starts at 12, Orange Bank st starts at 10, and Purple Venture starts at 5. There's a marker over here to keep track of each of the rounds. We have plenty of tokens for each of the shares uh, in 10, 50s, and 100s. There's a certain amount of shares that are available during the first four rounds, 300 after that, the amount of shares goes up depending on which of the stocks. There's paper money included in the game, which is a sad state of affairs, but what do you do? Some people just insist on using paper money. And a couple decks of card. Each player gets four tokens at the, at, during each round. These tokens are marked one, two, two, and three. On your turn, you can use one of these tokens. You flip it over to show that you've used it, and you move the pawn that far on the track. Depending on what space you land on depends on what you can do. Many of the spaces say trade, and you simply can buy or sell stocks. When you buy or sell stocks, you can either buy or sell each stock, and when you do so, if you buy it, the price then goes up after you're done. If you sell it, the price goes down. And so you can control the price of stocks by when you buy them. Other than that, you're only limited by the number of uh, euros that you have at that point in time. There are also market news spaces on the board, and this is randomness in the game to be sure, where it will t tell you uh, different things. Like, for example, this card says that Orange Bank has gone down two. Here it goes down four. Blue Motors goes up three. Sometimes it's a random company that things will affect, and for that you'll need a die. However, players also have two of these tokens that they will start each round with, whether they're positive or negative. And they can place these on expectations on the banks and uh, I mean on the different stocks and control the prices that way. Also, there's a new space in the board, uh, Analyst, where you can pay 100 euros and you can see which market news is coming up next, which can give you kind of a heads up and then you can immediately buy or sell. And then there's secret information, which is a chance that a different stock will go up or down. For example, here, this stock, there's a rumor that they owned real estate, which will be dissolved from the green belt zone. The, room, the chance of this rumor being true is pretty bad. Uh, only one out of six, rolling a five, a 15% chance, and then the rest of it means it will go down. But if you get this card, you can choose whether or not to play it, and then if you do, you roll the die and see what happens. So all this has some control over stock. Players play until all their tokens are done. The token, uh, this, to they've turned over all four tokens. After they do so, the pawn will have moved around the board. Secret information is played. Market news happens. Expectations are added. The prices go up and down. Everyone gets 500 more euros. Uh, you get a 100 euro bonus if you control the most stocks of each of the four different companies. And we continue on to the next round. After round four, you can buy more than 300 uh, stocks of each of the companies. And at the end of the game, you sell all your stocks for the current price, whoever has the most money wins. There's some other rules that if a stock company uh, price goes so low that the company dissolves, or if it goes so high that the company reaches a premium, everyone sells their stocks, and then the company basically resets. But that's basically the gist of the game, buying and selling stock to get money. Let's get the niggling things out of the way first. Box, way too big. Giant box, game is not nearly as big to fit in a box, but uh, I guess if you... Uh, want a sturdy box, you're in luck. Secondly, the game is a little too long. Eight rounds just felt like it was went uh, 
maybe just too long of buying and selling stock. I would prefer to play with six rounds, and I've done so, and I haven't really seen that it's changed the game that much as, as, as it plays. The components, though, those are my niggling things. The components are great, though. I love the little share pieces, I mean, except for the money. The cards work well. The, the, the tracks to keep track of the price of the stock is so much better than doing it with pencil and paper and figuring out how many stocks you have. Now you simply look at your tokens and you multiply. Everything is multiplied by 10, uh, which makes it very easy. Although I would still imagine that some mathematically challenged people are going to need calculators to play this game. But for the most part, I, I think it does a good job at simulating the stock market. It, you can't control everything in this game. There is rising and falling of the prices, but you have a lot more control than you think you do, and you can make deals with other players in a sense to work together to bring up the price of green stock and shoot down blue stock. It's usually not a good idea to have all your eggs in one basket. If I was going to use a game to teach teenagers or, or adults about the stock market, this would be my choice. This is a very good game and a much, much improved version of the original game, Fund Manager. Super Stocks. N uh, super, oh, I'm not going to make a pun. It's just a good game. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.